In May, Ukraine's first Patriot air defense battery became operational, and immediately Russia's success rate with long-range missile attacks plummeted. It's a success story that's taken even the United States by surprise, especially because it was accomplished by what was once the worst air defense system in the world. Russia is what many military analysts have come to refer as not very smart. The nation has limited availability of precision weapons after hurling every one available from its pre-war stocks at every civilian target possible. Sanctions have bitten deep, curbing its ability to produce domestic precision weapons significantly. Famously, last year, one plant creating missiles for its S-300 and S-400 air defense systems was forced to close due to a lack of microchips, with its engineers being offered unpaid vacation or a contract with the Russian army. Today, Russia is estimated to produce a very limited number of precision long-range munitions every month. Estimates point at about 67 missiles, 25 calibers, 35 KH-101s, 2 Kinzals, and 5 9M723 ballistic missiles. Facing a growing Ukrainian counterattack and staggering battlefield defeats over the winter, Russia has naturally chosen to hurl these missiles at civilian targets the moment they become available, rather than save them up for concentrated strategic strikes that could make an impact on the war. To be fair, to Russia, even a broken clock is right twice a day, and recently the nation has managed to strike a Ukrainian airbase and ammo depot with cruise missiles. While letting Russia stupidly expend its precision weapons on civilian targets would spare military ones, the international community finally tisked tisk at Russia's war crimes and started delivering advanced Western air defense systems. Overnight, Ukraine's ability to protect its skies skyrocketed. While Russia first began sending waves of Sahid drones, most were slipping through and causing a short-lived reign of terror. Now Ukraine is boasting over 90% interception rates in areas covered by Western air defenses. Unfortunately, though, these air defenses can't be everywhere all at once. But one system has been key to Ukraine's success in defending itself against Russia's greatest threat, its once-touted hypersonic weapons. That system is America's MIM-104 Patriot, and it was once one of the world's worst air defense systems. The Patriot has its roots in the 1970s, with an early prototype successfully intercepting a drone aircraft over White Sands Missile Range in 1975. A year later, it was renamed the Patriot and entered full-scale development. The system was a significant leap ahead in technology, featuring brand new tech such as passively electronically scanned array radar. This would be a significant leap ahead in tech, as ASA radars are much more efficient and powerful than mechanically scanning radars. Its track via missile guidance system used its ground-based radar to illuminate targets, but featured a receiver on the missile itself to dramatically improve accuracy over long ranges. Patriot would be officially developed until 1984. Originally designed to kill enemy aircraft, the PAC-1 or Patriot Advanced Capability-1 upgrade gave it the ability to target tactical ballistic missiles. However, there were concerns that the Patriot's MIM-104AB missile wouldn't be able to actually destroy ballistic missiles during an intercept, prompting the development of the Patriot Pac-2. The Pac-2 upgrade featured new radar search algorithms and modifications to the radar beam itself when the system was in search mode for ballistic missile targets, improving its efficiency and accuracy. It also upgraded the system's interceptor to the Pac-2 or MIM-104C missile, optimized for destroying ballistic targets rather than aircraft. Patriot used a blast fragmentation warhead to scatter hypersonic debris in a large cloud and shred enemy aircraft, sort of like a giant shotgun blast in the sky. However, up against fast-moving ballistic missiles, the small 2-gram fragments might not be enough to destroy the missile. Thus, the warhead was modified to produce much larger 45-gram fragments, which is still pretty deadly to any aircraft and pilot not designed to operate with hundreds of 45-gram holes in its cockpit. As Patriot was designed to explode near the plane cockpit and kill a pilot instead of near the engines like most SAMs. The Pulse Doppler radar fuse, which used radar pulses to gauge distance to a target, was also changed when in ballistic missile intercept mode. Though the entire system retained old algorithms for engaging slower moving aircraft, how Patriot engaged targets was also modified. Rather than firing two interceptors in a rapid volley, Patriot would now fire two missiles with a 3-4 to four second delay. This would allow Patriot's second missile to identify if a ballistic missile had been destroyed by the first interceptor's detonation. Patriot Pac-2 would be operational by 1990, just in time for America's first showdown with Saddam Hussein, and it did not do a very good job. During Desert Storm, the Allies' greatest fear was Saddam Hussein using his vast inventory of Scud ballistic missiles to target regional neighbors, especially Israel, which Saddam hoped to rope into the fight. 
thus angering and splintering America's Arab allies. Thus, it was priority number one to find and destroy Iraq's mobile Scud missile launchers, and for those that couldn't be taken out before launching, Patriot would be responsible for intercepting. What happened next depends on who you ask. If you ask the US Army circa 1991, it would do its best impression of the Russian Ministry of Defense and quote a 100% success rate, with Patriot blasting not just every single Iraqi scud out of the sky, but also time traveling back to late World War II and intercepting every single German V-2 rocket ever launched as well. The US military fielded the world's best and most infallible ballistic missile defense system ever created, past, present, or future. However, if you ask investigators appointed by the US Congress in 1992, Patriot had successfully intercepted anywhere between exactly zero and four of the 44 scuds the system engaged during the course of the war, a far cry from both the US Army and President George Bush's claim that Patriot was 100% effective. The reason for the difference in figures is likely the Army wanting to avoid the embarrassment of admitting its very expensive ballistic missile defense system did not, in fact, defend from ballistic missiles very efficiently. Now, to be fair, ballistic missile defense is incredibly difficult, and at the time there was no system in the world that could reliably intercept targets. However, the fact that Army observers were also doing a very bad job at observing impacts could also come into play. When Patriot interceptors shot up into the sky and observers witnessed a resulting explosion in the distance, it was chalked up to a successful kill. But the observed explosions were simply Patriot doing its thing, as the Pac-2 missile explodes with a very visible fireball when it sprays hypervelocity shrapnel in every direction. They were also the missiles self-detonating after missing their intended target. To add to the confusion, ground damage assessments were either not carried out or done so poorly. Nobody went out looking for the wreckage of Iraqi scuds to verify they'd actually been hit. Lastly, Patriot itself was incapable of verifying a successful intercept. Instead, the system simply told its operator whether or not the SAM had exploded at its intended target point, which Patriot assumed would be a successful intercept, since ballistic missiles fly in a very predictable trajectory. Then there's mistakes that the radar itself made. On the very first claimed interception, January 18, 1991, Patriot put on a hell of a show for the TV cameras, as Patriot interceptors fired off into the sky. Soon after, there was a series of explosions. America patted itself on the back. $1.04 billion well spent. We're number one. The old stars and stripes still fly on the moon. However, Patriot had been firing at absolutely nothing, confusing radar interference from a nearby friendly aircraft as a possible target, leading to multiple interceptors self-destructing on their own. Saddam did what he could to help Patriot inadvertently fail as well. Turns out Iraqi scuds were rather rushed affairs and not produced to the best of standards. This meant that a fair number of them broke up during flight, and Patriot read each as an incoming threat, lobbing very expensive missiles at them. Observers recorded its subsequent destruction of inert flying material as a downed scud. After the congressional investigation, the Army did its own rethinking of their previous estimates, arriving at the conclusion that they were reasonably sure Patriot had intercepted 11 scuds. Independent estimates, however, still put the figure at 0 to 4, with 158 total missiles launched at scuds at a cost of $4 million per missile. Patriot did more to lose the war for America by bankrupting it than Saddam did with all his military. After the war, the US put significant money into fixing the Patriot, leading to the Pac-3 configuration. This would be the biggest change to the Patriot system since its inception, and affected almost everything. The upgrade would be so far-reaching in scope that it took place in three stages, with Configuration 1 released in 1995, Configuration 2 in 96, and Configuration 3 in 2000. One huge upgrade was roping Patriot into the US military's Link-16 command and control network. This is the secret behind the US military's success, as it allows warfighters on different platforms to all network together and share battle space awareness. Patriot could now see what other friendly forces saw and vice versa, making each battery significantly more dangerous than they would be acting alone. The software was also upgraded to conduct tailored ballistic missile searches, optimizing searches for sectors known to have ballistic missile activity, and creating keep out altitude, which ensures chemical warheads or early release submunitions are destroyed at an altitude that will render them ineffective. 
The radar received another traveling wave tube, increasing its ability to search, detect, track, and discriminate between targets. It also is now capable of discriminating between manned and unmanned threats, and allegedly of determining which warheads re-entering the atmosphere are actually carrying ordnance and which are decoys. The system also introduced the PAC-3 missile, specifically designed for ballistic missile defense. It was first deployed in 1997, and thanks to advancements in miniaturization, each Patriot battery has effectively quadrupled its total missile capacity, with 180 pulse-solid propellant rocket motors mounted onto the body of the missile. The Pac-3 is a more maneuverable hit-to-kill interceptor that uses kinetic energy to blast its target to pieces. However, the missile features a small explosive charge that creates 24 low-speed tungsten fragments to aid it in destroying its target. The new missile also features a new active radar seeker, no longer needing to be linked to its launching battery and making it more accurate while increasing effectiveness in electronically contested domains. The Army was no longer messing around and Pac-3 is designed specifically to destroy ballistic missiles. Thus, air defense units will deploy with both Pac-3 and Pac-2 variants to cover both ballistic missile and anti-aircraft defense. Details have not been officially confirmed, but visual identification of Patriot batteries provided to Ukraine have confirmed that the nation's been given the Pac-3 variant, and any doubts that the Gulf War had left about Patriot's effectiveness have officially been squashed. Nobody truly knew how Patriot would perform against Russian ordnance, yet the results from Ukraine speak for themselves. Ukraine has not revealed which weapon intercepted which, but its successful interceptor rate has skyrocketed to upwards of 90% against Russia's various weapons, including its feared Kinzhal hypersonic missiles. Then again, Kinzhal, touted by Russia as a next-generation hypersonic weapon, was found out that it was what defense analysts have academically termed bullshit all along. Russia's made many claims about its hypersonic weapons preying on Western fears of the US being outclassed in the hypersonic race. Yet, most of the missiles fired by Russia at Ukraine are not modern hypersonic weapons, but rather typical ballistic missiles that reach hypersonic speeds thanks to gravity. A modern hypersonic weapon is one that reaches hypersonic speeds while remaining maneuverable. And the maneuverable part is the most important because intercepting a hypersonic ballistic missile is pretty easy with modern systems like the Patriot due to the fact that ballistic trajectories are, well, ballistic and thus easily predictable. But modern hypersonics aim to mix incredibly fast speeds with maneuverability, making them a nightmare to intercept with any air defense system. Kinzhal was touted by Russia as being a modern hypersonic weapon that could reach London in 9 minutes and evade all known air defenses. However, on closer inspection, Kinzhal is anything but. It uses a solid fuel rocket engine rather than a scramjet or similar engine, which means the engine can't be throttled and it runs out of fuel relatively quickly, leaving it to coast to its target unpowered. Thus, the Kinzhal is unlikely to be able to maintain hypersonic speeds for very long. The fact that the missile also features very meager reaction control systems means that it's in fact about as maneuverable as an elephant on a dirt bike. As has famously been said, war doesn't tolerate bullshit, and Kinzhal was put to the test against Western air defenses and failed miserably. However, Patriot wasn't done impressing observers with its performance, as it had the biggest test on May 16th against a saturation attack many feared would overwhelm the system's ability to defend its airspace. On May 16th, Russia threw everything it could strap to a rocket at Ukrainian air defenses, with the goal of overwhelming them in one swoop and destroying all that fancy Western gear that Ukraine had just received. Instead, Russia once more got humiliated. The Russian armed forces launched an attack using drones, crews, ballistic, and hypersonic missiles launched from various platforms in Russia and in the Black Sea, and descending on their targets simultaneously from multiple vectors. It was a well-coordinated and well-executed attack. Patriot was better. It was the largest attack on Kyiv of the entire war, with Serhiy Popko, head of Kyiv city military administration, calling it exceptional in its density, the maximum number of attack missiles in the shortest period of time. Despite coming in on different vectors, Patriot and its accompanying Western air defense batteries were able to successfully target, track, and defeat the wave of missiles. When the smoke cleared, Three people had been injured and one building damaged. One Patriot battery was apparently damaged, and despite Russian claims it was destroyed, the US confirmed the battery was still fully operational. New Patriot batteries are now on their way to Ukraine, and the Western world has greatly increased confidence in the American-built system. 
Even China has taken note of its success in Ukraine. Given that its patriot, who will share part of the responsibility of defending American and allied installations in any war in the Pacific against China's vast arsenal of ballistic missiles. The success of Patriot has forced Russia to change tactics, now launching daytime attacks to coordinate with changing shifts, with drone swarm attacks hot on their heels. Russia's goal is to either destroy Patriot physically or exhaust Ukraine's supply of missiles. In response, the West is rushing to provide better short-range air defenses, better suited to destroy targets such as drones, which would be a waste for Patriot to expend an interceptor on. Now go watch why Russia is scared of F-16s in Ukraine, or click this other video instead.